Barry Trower is my name. I started studying microwaves and the effects of microwaves in 1959. I studied all aspects of microwave warfare because microwaves at that time were being used as weapons. I was in the Royal Navy and I was also a diver in the Royal Navy. When I left the Navy, because I had special knowledge in microwaves, which was the, the new Cold War weapon, I was asked to get information from captured spies to do with the new developments from around the world in microwave weapons. When I left that job, I went into teaching. I taught advanced physics, uh, mathematics, human physiology. I studied nuclear and atomic physics. I specialised in microwave absorption. I am the author of the TETRA report for the Police Federation. I was commissioned to write that in 2001. I was subsequently commissioned by another police union to write the higher confidential report, commenting on all of the breast cancers and throat cancers of the women police officers. And since then, I have been jetting all over the world, answering questions. Uh, I talk to governments, leaders of peoples, royalty. And at the moment, it, it's taking up all of my life. There are thousands upon tens of thousands of different microwave frequencies. They all react with water, but different waves will react with different parts of the body. It's to do with resonance. Your body has a resonant frequency. Your body is wobbling now, atomically. Everything has a resonant frequency that it is designed to wobble at. So when you put microwaves in, depending on the size of the organ, the size of the molecule, the size of the atom, the microwaves can interact. And when you interact with the body, then you can cause a lot of damage. For instance, when microwaves go through, they can entrain the waves and all of the parts of the brain. In other words, the resonant frequency is being increased, which means you are not working properly. And we know that a, a, a child who uses a cell phone, if he makes a call for two minutes, his brain is entrained for two hours before it returns to normal. If you use a cell phone regularly, you fall into a category that comes under long-term potentiation. And long-term potentiation can take six weeks for your body to recover. It works out for an adult that if you use a cell phone for around 27 minutes a day, and that's accumulative, for about 10 years, your chances of getting a tumour or something are greater than not getting it. If you're a child, you could put that down to five to seven minutes spread over a day. And if you're a child, your chances are greater after about two and a half years. We know that children are more susceptible and the elderly and the sick and the sensitive. And then you end up with the women who have more delicate hormone balances which are at risk and finally you have fit young men. And oddly enough the worst frequency that is known to cause damage to the brain is the Wi-Fi frequency and we have now put it into every classroom in every school for children to use from the age of five up until they finish university. It is documented by the intelligence services 
as the worst frequency that we know of to cause harm to the brain and harm to the body. It was also known during the Cold War that <coughs> microwaved exposed women at slightly less than what you are going to experience in school suffered a 47.7% miscarriage rate at the seventh week of pregnancy. This is known, has been known for 50 years, that microwaves will cause stillbirth, miscarriage and genetically damaged children. The top government science agencies have published that this happens and we know why it happens. Each child, each female, as they are born, they have the 400,000 eggs or ovarian follicles. So if you are a schoolgirl five years old, you are microwaving the 400,000 follicles that you will one day need to produce a child. I was guest speaker at Brighton University talking about this and one of the professors or doctors, he said that from his experiments, it was around a 60% miscarriage, stillbirth, genetically damaged newborn rate from other mammalian species. Now, that's the good news. The bad news, if you have a mitochondrial damage, and that is most likely, it doesn't just mean that your daughter, when she's born, will have a genetic damage if she is alive. It means her daughter will carry that genetic damage because it is irreparable. We are risking 60% of all of your family line to have genetic disability wherever it comes in the body. A sweep survey found 200 schools in one go with leukaemia clusters, with teachers having 11 different types of cancer, where you've got a dozen children or more under the age of 11 dying with leukaemia. It's even been brought up in our parliament. And on more than one occasion, a minister has stood up and lied the government scientists know this and in any country you could have just a handful two or three people that know this but the problem is they are the only people that MPs are allowed to go to. There is a paradox here whereby you have a known weapon that is known to cause cancer known to cause neurological damage and you're giving it to general members of the public and children and saying it's safe. You, you can't do that. It's like giving children guns and saying these are perfectly safe, go and play with them. The government scientists know what they're doing. They are making money for industry. And it's not the first time. Look at smoking, look at lead in petrol. There's a dozen things I can name where we knew before it even started it was going to cause more deaths than any war. We have 53 organisations in this country using Tetra, Tetra Airwave. It is what the police use, the fire brigade, the coast guard, the secret services. When you see the, the system here, it's that. <clears throat> but it has a particular pulse frequency of 17.6 pulses. That is known and is documented to have been known before it even came out. That particular pulse frequency causes calcium efflux in the body. Calcium efflux can damage the brain. It can cause cancer. It can cause all sorts of damage in the body, all over the body. And we know this can happen. And knowing this could happen, 
The government scientists who say it was safe, but we're going to experiment on this until 2018, they are experimenting to see how many officers get cancer, how many die, and it is an illegal experiment. Because under the Nuremberg Treaty at the end of the Second World War, no person is allowed to be experimented upon until they have understood the experiment and they have the right to say no. That right was waived for the police force, the ambulance service, the fire brigade. In my higher confidential reports for the police federation, for one of the police unions, I had over a three month period five police ladies sitting where you are, crying their eyes out with breast cancer or throat cancer. And they had been threatened by the government that if they took them to court, they would be sacked, moved, they would lose their house, lose their job. So the police have a, a choice, resign, and they don't know why they're resigning because they've not been told the dangers, resign or carry on with it. I have had one question for every country, every school, every person, it is in my paper, and I've asked it all over the world. And when I appear on television and radio as I do, I want to face your top scientists, even scientists. I'll sit in front of a gang of them, it doesn't bother me. I have one question and I've had it for 20 years. What is the safe level of pulsed microwave irradiation for the first 100 days in the development of the embryo? And in 20 years, not a single government scientist, advisor, minister, anybody, not one person will face me live. And they know they won't because there isn't a safe level. They know they are committing genocide. And not one person has the courage to stand there or sit there and say, I am deeming this safe.